Welcome to this amazing tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how to use a mentoring tool. Now majority of the students have been reaching out to me and then they have been asking me on what, how you are going to use this document we call a mentoring tool. And apart from that, as a certified trainer, I've been moving from one industry, um, going to the industry to assess students. And then you have been able to see that this problem cut across. The mentee and the mentor, they don't know what is expected of them to fill this particular document. Now, when you compare uh, the logbook that you are using in the previous curriculum and the mentoring tool, the mentoring tool is a little bit uh, a detailed compared to the logbook that you've been using in the previous curriculum. Now, CBET is more of an, uh, an evidence-based curriculum. So everything that you're supposed to do, it requires you to do to attach some evidence on it. Yeah. So in this particular tutorial, we are going, I'm going to guide you on how you're going to, to fill this mentoring tool and what is expected of you whether you are a mentor or whether you are a mentee, this is a, a, a video that you can go to use to know what exactly is required of you uh, every time you have got uh, such kind of uh, an exercise. Now, before we dive in and see what is entailed in this particular uh, mentoring tool, this is ICT uh, Technician Level 5. It is a curriculum that was designed by Tivet Sidak and this is their mentoring tool. So I just want to use it as an example so that you can be able to see how uh, you can fill your mentoring tool. And you realize that this particular mentoring tool, it cut across in multiple courses. The only thing that changes maybe in one or another is just maybe the name uh, of the course. But basically the, the structure of a mentoring tool is the same. Now, what is a mentoring tool? Now, a mentoring tool basically is a, is a, is a document that is used um, in the industry to assess the competence of a trainee. Okay, so in this particular mentoring tool, there are some key areas that um, is required that a, train, a trainee should meet for him or her to be declared competent. So this is, this is a very uh, important document because it is going to tell us if this particular person is industry prepared. Okay. Now, in the previous, in the previous curriculum, when I, I started talking about it, I said that in the previous curriculum, the logbook was not so much detailed in, the, in a manner that it only required you to know a few aspects about this particular student maybe you can know about the punctuality you're supposed to know about the teamwork know about that but the technical perspective of it or the the skills acquired was not captured now but this one is more detailed to an extent that you are supposed to know what is expected of you now i've talked about two main people that plays a very important role in this particular uh thing we have talked about the mentor and then you talked about the mentee so we are going to define what a mentor is. A mentor basically is a person who provides support and advice that empowers the mentee to achieve knowledge, skills, and attitude. In other words, I'm saying that this is a person who provides support and advice that empowers the mentee to achieve competence. So when you talk about competence, basically you mean the knowledge, the skills, and the attitude. And when you talk about the attitude, it's basically the work behavior, the worker behavior. Now, I can give it an example in a way that everybody can understand me. Yeah, It's for example, you have got a bicycle. Yeah? You have got a bicycle. And in this particular case, somebody asks you, how, to, how do you ride a bicycle? Okay, you give me the steps of what is involved uh, in order for you to ride a bicycle. Then somebody asks you, can you demonstrate to us how to ride a bicycle so when you're giving me the steps of what is required of you to ride a bicycle we say that that you have the knowledge of how to ride a bicycle but when you when you when you when somebody tells you that uh, can you show me how to ride a bicycle then you're supposed to to show me the skills that you you have towards riding a bicycle 
And then the last thing that you need to know is the attitude when you're riding the bicycle. What are some of the behavior you are supposed to put in place? Okay, one of the behavior it can be be attentive on the road so that you don't knock down people. Okay, ensure that you're on your on your right hand uh, on the on the on the right uh, uh, position on the road. Okay, ensure that you adhere to traffic lights. So those are some of the things, some of the behaviors for every rider should have every time you are on the road. Okay, so if you can be able to adhere to these three things, you can have the knowledge of what riding a bicycle is. You know how to ride a bicycle and then you know the behavior that is required of you to ride a bicycle. Joining them together, we can say that you are competent in riding a bicycle. Yeah. Now, the mentor plays a very important role in this particular document. So the mentor basically assists the mentee understand the organization requirements. He's supposed to assign the mentee tasks. He's supposed to observe the mentee uh, uh, performance and record areas where the mentee needs to improve, assist the mentee to come up with the action plans for, for areas where he needs improvement. So these are some of the things you're going to look in this particular case. Now, what is a, who is a mentee? Yeah. A mentee is a trainee who, who is on a work placement or is on job training in an organization. So our student, when they leave, or our trainees, when they leave our, our colleges, when they go to the industry, they are going to be referred to us as mentee. Because these are people who are on job training, on job training. Yeah. Now, what a mentee is supposed to do in the field, uh, uh, field attachment, basically is supposed to complete assess, assessment tasks assigned to, uh, to him or her by the, by the mentor. Then also keep the, the company information confidential. Yeah, so that's very important. And then you have being aware that he or she may be working with the people of different uh, background, and therefore there is need for you to respect the differences that you have in that particular workplace. Then you are also supposed to be asking the feedback and giving feedback when required. So those are some of the things that every mentee should be able to know how to how to carry themselves in the industry. Yeah. Now, every course. Every course has got the basic, the common, and and the core units. Every every unit every course has got those three uh, or four uh, parts. It has got the basic units, the common units, and then it has got what we call the the core units. Now I'll explain this in a very simple way. Talking of the basic units, these are the the the, the, the essential units that each and every trainee should know. Common units, these are the units that cut across in multiple courses. Multiple courses, people do this same, same unit. Okay. Essential, uh, uh, as essential uh, uh, the basic uh, units, these are the essential uh, units that every trainee should know. Every trainee should know. But when we talk about common units, these are common units that cut across in that particular environment, or in that particular space. Yeah. So they cut across in that particular space. When you talk about ICT, for example, there is this unit called basic electronics. So you'll realize that it cut across. Whether you are doing level 5, level 6, there is that unit that uh, is there that cut across in all these uh, uh, courses. Now, okay. now, when you talk about the mentoring tool, each and every unit, whether basic, okay, whether basic, whether core unit, it is supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be assessed individually there is not there is no that general way that you have been doing in uh, in uh, in uh, in the in the, uh, the previous uh, curriculum yeah so there's no general way that you can just generalize the unit and then you assess them all of them so in mentoring tool you are supposed to assess each and every unit of competence okay now in this particular uh, mentoring tool you can see there are 13 there are 13 units of uh, the, the 13 units that you're supposed to be assessed. Okay. Now, what you're going to do, we are going to look at how you can be able to fill this first unit called demonstrate communication skills. Now, here at the first point, they are talking about that the mentor and the mentee, there's something that you need to pay attention here, that please fill information for each of the three sections in the respective columns. Okay. Initials should be used as given in the header below. 
Okay, so you have been told what you are expected to feel, and then they are talking of the three sections. So, which three sections you are talking about? The knowledge, the skill, and the attitude. Those are the three sections you are talking about. Okay, now. When I will explain these columns in a very simple way. One, we will have what you call the serial number. So the serial number basically is the number of the item, the number given to the item, or the number given to that uh, area. Okay. Now, in this particular case, you are going to say that uh, um, item of evaluation, the knowledge, the skill, and the attitude. Which item are you going to be evaluated on? Yeah. So you are supposed to know that particular one and then you you run with it then the second one is that um, the third column here is that not applicable not applicable is only used when um, that item of for evaluation is not applicable in that particular space that item of for evaluation is not applicable in that space that you are working so when you realize that that particular skill or that particular knowledge is not required in that particular area, then you are required to indicate with NA. NA basically means not applicable. Now, in case that particular item for evaluation is applicable, you move to this column. And this column is what you call self-assessment record. Self-assessment record is to say that... Uh, a student assesses himself, the mentee assesses him or herself. Am I competent? Am I able to be able to do this particular task? So if the answer is yes, then you write met. And then you indicate the date when that particular, um, uh, 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 the date that you met that particular uh, item for evaluation. But in case you realize that that part, yes, it is applicable in that space, but you don't have sufficient knowledge in that particular area or sufficient skill in that particular area. You ought to indicate need to improve. NI. NI stands for need to improve. Yeah. So need to improve basically means that, yes, I've tested myself on this particular item for evaluation and then I've realized that I don't have the necessary uh, knowledge in this particular case and therefore I need to do something about it. Okay. Now, there is no harm whatsoever if you indicate need to improve. You need to improve basically means that you have tested yourself and then you realize that you have something, you have a problem, uh, and then you need help or you need the mentor to help you in that particular area. So it's very important for you to be honest and just say, if I'm not capable, then I need help in this particular area. Now, the mentor review record. The mentor review record, remember we say that one of the tasks or one of the role of the mentor is to observe the performance of the mentee. So when you are executing these items of evaluation, the mentor is supposed to do the observation so that you can be able to assess the performance of how you are going to execute these tasks. Now, if the, men, the mentor is certified or satisfied, that the, the, the mentee is capable to handle a certain item of evaluation, then is going to indicate with met. Then the, men, the mentor is supposed to give us the initials. So the initials basically in this name is just the name. For example, you can just write the name. For example, the name is maybe James W. J, J W. That is the initial. Yeah, that is the initials. And also give us the date. Yeah. So that is when the, he has observed, he or she has observed the student, uh, the mentee doing some an, an item of evaluation or for evaluation, and then is is convinced that that particular mentee has done the right thing. Then he can be able to indicate it as met. But if he has doubts or is not satisfied that this particular student or this particular mentee has done the right thing, then he's supposed to indicate that need to improve. Need to improve. Now, there, it is not possible, it is not possible that the trainee has indicated, uh, the, the mentee has indicated need to improve, and then the mentor review here, record says that met. That one, I think there is some kind of, there is no agreement between the mentor and the, and the mentee. So how can 
a student assess himself and says, fine, yeah. I, I feel like I'm not co I'm competent in this area. And then you, as the way you are observing it as a mentor, you feel like, yeah, this particular person is right. So you need to hammer some kind of agreement between the two. So, so that when the mentor gives the final verdict, he should be convinced that this student or this particular mentee is capable to handle this particular area correctly. Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to, to know is that after you have been able to have uh, maybe the, the, the trainee, the mentee has been able to, 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 to write that need to improve and also the mentor has, uh, has also acknowledged that there is need for improvement in this particular area, they come up with what we call the action plan. They come up with what we call the action plan. Now, in the action plan, in this particular case, we are going to lay out the strategy of how we can be able to address this particular problem. How can we be able to be competent or how can we be able to acquire the knowledge in this particular area? So you come up with an action plan on how you are going to improve in that particular knowledge or in that particular skill. So that is where we are going to write the action plan. Then we have got the evidence. We have said that CPET is an evidence-based curriculum. This means that everything that you do in each and every item for evaluation that you are declared competent or you are declared to, met, to be met, you need to have an evidence. So type of the evidence that you can provide when we come to assess or when the, 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 the trainer comes to, to, to assess you is that you are supposed to provide a marked scripts. You can decide to provide marked scripts. And then when you talk about marked script, basically it doesn't mean that uh, it should be handwritten. Yeah, you can also do an online test. Okay, you have realized that in that particular environment, maybe for example, I don't, I don't know about maybe conflict strategies. Then you have learned something online about conflict strategies. And then you have tested the knowledge. You take a screenshot of that particular test or you download a PDF file or a PDF document that I was not competent in this particular area. I went online, I did a course or maybe I did a certain training and then I had a test in this particular area to test my knowledge and then this is the evidence that I have been able to achieve this particular part. Okay. So another one is that uh, you can also be able to do, uh, you can also have the observation checklist. So. Once you are, you are saying something, uh, maybe you are being maybe you are being asked to demonstrate a certain process. Your mentor can be able to have up an observation checklist, maybe to check, uh, maybe if you can be able to meet the required criteria in a certain process. Yeah. So he he, take, uh, he, he codes that particular observation checklist correctly on how you respond to a certain uh, area of competence. Then you can as well be able to have the photos. Yeah, you can also be able to have the uh, photos. Also, the videos is highly recommended in this particular case. 